Hi, in today's video we are going to look at the last few systems that you can design on the Starfront program. We're going to go through these fairly briefly because we have covered the majority of systems. The design principle stays the same whether you're designing a casement window or a balustrade. So I'm just going to show you the additional systems just so that you know what is available in the Starfront program. This will be the last video in the design series. From now on, we're going to move into the costing and reporting aspects of the program. All right, so let's go back to that contract that we, we started where we've done our existing design. So I'm going to say open a contract. I'm going to go to sample 01, which is the sample contract that we created. And you might remember that the last design that we did was of Vista Folder. Okay, so let's add a few additional systems into this design so you can see more or less what is available and how they work. So let's add a new design. And I'm just going to give this reference or this design a reference A1. So we've looked at Krelka windows, we've looked at shop fronts, we've looked at doors. Serene is a system on its own. It's a system that's capable of doing inward opening windows, outward opening windows, tilt and turn windows, tilt and slide doors. So it's quite a comprehensive system. I'm not going to go into looking at specific designs. If you have a need for the Serene, you will know that you need to use the Serene. Then the next section is barriers and screens. Under barriers and screens, we've got a couple of different systems. We've got the Guardian, which is a sliding, expandable door barrier. We've got the Cassette 40, which is a roll-up insect screen. We've got the Dusk, which is also a different insect screen. The Tranquil, which is an insect screen for the um, Icon Patio door. The New York is the balustrade system. And then we have the Tranquil insect screen system. All right, so just, uh, just to show you as an example, if we take cassette 40, it's very simple. There is one opening, so it's basically just an opening. There's no frame associated with it. So if I say I want a, a screen which is 600 wide by 900 high, into that opening, opening number one, I'm going to put in an insect screen, a cassette 40, and I only have one insect screen that I can put in there. All right, so nothing complicated, very quick and simple system to use. Let's do another design. Let's call this A2. I'm going to stick with my barriers and screens. And this time I'm going to show you how the balustrade system gets designed. So I choose the New York as a system. I've then got three different options in terms of my frame. I've got just a straight balustrade. A balustrade with one corner post and a balustrade with two corner posts. So let's just take just a straight balustrade and there I can choose between just a single balustrade, in other words there's only stanchions on the outside, um, a double balustrade frame which has got a stanchion in the middle and then three, four and five configurations. So let's just choose the second item so we are specifying here with one and with two is the distance between those tangents. So let's leave those at a meter apart and let's leave the overall balustrade at, let's make it 900 high. Okay, and then what I can do is in between those tangents, I can put various different inserts. So in opening number one, um, I can just put in vertical bars with no gap at the top. Of I can put in vertical bars with a gap at the top. And I can put in a piece of glass with no gap or a piece of glass with a gap. So let's just put in vertical bars with no gap. One category, so it's very simple. And there I can choose just a fixed panel, a fixed panel with another stanchion or a fixed panel with two stanchions. So I've only got these panels 900 wide, so I'm going to just put in a fixed panel with outer stanchion. So that's what I'm getting on the right hand side there in terms of the design. 
And then just to show you a variation of that, this time I'm going to choose one with a gap. So into opening number two, I'm going to put in vertical bars with a gap. And I'm going to put in that similar design. So just so you can see the difference here. The difference is these vertical bars go directly in underneath the handrail. Here I've got a small transom that goes across and my vertical bars sit above that. Okay, obviously that's a bit of a mixed design, so let's just remove that insert in two and let's put the insert in two the same as the insert in one, just to make something which uh, looks decent. So that would be your typical balustrade design. That's on the New York system. All right, let's do another design. Let's do A3. Windows we've done, shop fronts, doors, serene, barriers and screens. We've covered enough on that. The next one is a section called baths and showers. Um, that covers the seal and the splash bath screen. And here I can choose between a panel this is like a shower door that's going to have a door in place or just a fixed panel. So let's choose a panel that's going to have a door in place. Let's say my shower opening is 800 wide and the height is 1800 high. All right, what are the available inserts into that opening? So there I can choose a shower door. I can choose um, either a pivot or a sliding door. So let's go and put, that would be a tri-slider door, the sliding. So let's just go and put a pivot door in there and there is only one pivot door. So I can put that pivot shower in there. So that would be a standard shower door using a pivot door, 800 wide by 1800 high. And I can also do a tri-slider door and I can do fixed panels, which I will then use as a return panel. Okay, so those are your baths, bath and shower enclosures. So let's do another design. I'm just going to call this design A number four. Um, curtain walls I'm not going to demonstrate. And on a lot of people's computers, you'll actually see curtain wall is turned off. Um, curtain walling is, is a specialized system that you need to understand properly how that is going to be attached back to the different slabs on the building, your expansion joints, your anchoring brackets and things like that. Um, it is available on Starfront. If you don't have it on your machine, then you need to contact your speaker and your speaker will give you permission to use the curtain walling system and they will activate the curtain walling system for you. And then finally, we've got a Gen X range of windows. These are with Speaker's eco range of windows, so it's basically a casement system, but it is using the lightest profiles that are available. So if you're in a situation where you have to compete against someone else and they're not concerned about the structural strength of those windows and the wall thickness and things like that, you can use a Gen X. There's a Gen X 28 and a Gen X 30.5. So let's use a 30.5 for something different. Then I've got a standard 35.5mm frame and a general frame, so we'll use our normal 30.5mm frame. I have the same range of frames available, bar a few extras on the bigger side. So let's just say I'm going to use, um, let's take a 2x2 frame or something different. I can say my overall width this design is 1200, my overall height is 1200 as well. And then what I want to do is into opening one, I want to put in a top hand sash. And into opening number two, I want to put in a top hand sash. All right, so it designs exactly the same as your Swift systems. This is just a basically an economy range of windows. Um, it doesn't carry the same guarantees and branding as the uh, Wispico Swift range, but it is priced as competitively as possible. There are obviously lots of other configurations and designs that can be done, particularly on the shopfront side. We haven't covered 
um, a huge variety of shop front frames, including sliding doors, pivot doors, pivot windows, louver blades, and a whole lot of other systems. Um, this is just an introduction to the design in some future videos where we are going to cover the more complex design examples, then we will address those issues as well. This now represents the end of the contract that I wanted to create for this um, example. Remember, I can use my blue navigation keys here at the top. I can go the first button quickly, which it's done. Okay. And my designs are going to be sorted alphabetically. So there's design A1, A2, A3 and A4, the ones we did today. Then we had the three different doors that we designed, the one shop front, and then the variety of nine different windows that we created, including both casement windows and sliding windows. So I can jump immediately to any one of those designs by just double clicking on it in this list that you get when you click on the button with three dots. Okay. Or alternatively, I can use my arrow keys to go through the various designs. If there's something that I don't want on my design, let's say I decide I need to remove that cassette 40 fly screen. What I can do is I can go here. I can look there. Uh, it was A1. I can see here the system code. That was my cassette 40. Go to that cassette 40. And then if I use my blue delete design button. When I click on that, it says, are you sure you wish to delete design A1? And you say yes. And now that design has been removed completely. If I go back into my screen, you will see here that I started A2 and there's no longer an A1 left in my design. So this is how you manipulate and edit your designs and, and get your contract to the point where it is complete according to the spec that you want. Once you've done this, then you are then going to go into your costing and you are going to cost this job. And that is going to be the subject of the next series of videos where we look at the costing aspects of the Starfront program. So nice and short and sweet today. Uh, once again, thank you for taking time to watch this video. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. And we'll see each other again soon in the future video.